Say Nicholas. I'm the Frank Fryer. Let's get Frank about it. If you like what I'm doing here on my YouTube channel, please make sure to click that subscribe button and that little bell icon. That way you don't miss out with anything I'm doing in the land of Carmel. Also, if you want to continue the conversation, leave a comment down below. And you can also go over to my Twitter handle at CarmelitenNick and see what I'm doing over there on Twitter. Or you can go over to my Facebook page, The Real Frank Fryer. These are two great resources to stay up to date with everything I'm doing in the land of Carmel. Enjoy the video. So I'm at one of our schools today, and you know, my uh, mind's been thinking because this video is going to be going to go up on the sort of memorial of St. Nicholas. I am Father Nicholas. I am named after him. Now, many of you may not know this. Some of you may. I don't know. But uh, Nicholas is not my legal name. It is my religious name. And one of the reasons I particularly like this space right here I'm in is it's got that nice little Starry Night painting from Van Gogh in the background. And, you know, names in a way bring our mind into a, a certain imagination, you know, and an ability to, to understand what's going on in our life, what's going on in the world, and see our place in the world, etc. That's why when we have a child named, it's of the utmost importance and why it should be taken with great seriousness and not done in such a way where someone's maybe making a, a social statement and etc. If you hear some noise in the background, there's glasses right over there. And I'm in an awesome rocking chair, so I feel kind of like an old man with a beard, I suppose. Now, I asked for a religious name. It's not a common practice anymore within, you know, our, our uh, province or, or Carmelite order to just be given a religious name. You have to ask for it and put forward a reason why you want it and et cetera. You know, so I, I told my provincial why, you know, and, and et cetera. And he said, okay, what three names? And you give him three names and he picks one. So I asked either to be St. Anselm, after, named after St. Anselm, St. Cyril of Jerusalem, or St. Nicholas. And Nicholas being because, you know, I've done a lot of work with the Boy Scouts. Um, I've worked in schools, been teaching for years. I've done a lot of work with youth groups overseas when I was in the Peace Corps. You know, I've always had a, a special place in my heart for working with kids and et cetera, helping them to succeed in this world. I am a firm believer in the power of a, of a good education. And he chose Nicholas. And also, one of the reasons I chose Nicholas is he was actually the first saint I ever read. I came to the church in college, and being a history major, you know, I'm like, I'm going to start, you know, reading the historical text of the Bible, and, and I'm going to start reading about the saints. And I'm like, well, what's going on with the Saint Nick guy? You know, I've heard about him in Santa Claus, et cetera. And I was just fascinated by his story and, and by the hagiography, sort of the, the, the mythical accounts of, of the life around him, and et cetera. And he's always sort of been close to me and, and struck me in a certain way. And of course, his name meaning, meaning the victorious people. It always helps to remind me whenever I hear my name or et cetera, you know, that I have been brought into the body of Christ and am counted one as the victorious people as long as I stay true and remain true to Jesus Christ. And, you know, particularly during this time of year with Christmas around the corner and, and an Advent, you know, where we're preparing for the second coming of the Lord by remembering the first, you know, the saints can play a special role in our life because our saints can, and I say ours because they're our brother and sister, so we can speak about them in familiar terms. And, you know, when we, we spend time with the saints and we get to know the saints and their stories and their character, their, their personalities as, as sort of characters in the world and et cetera, you know, we, we get to see you know, the, they help to give flesh to the grace of God, you know. They help to, to see how the movement of God in a person's life can really bring about a true transformation within the world. And, you know, the saints help us to realize that, yeah, we are called to sanctity, we are called to holiness, and it is possible for each of us. You know, we talk about such an importance of diversity in the world these days, particularly in the uh, Western world, you know, and it's almost as it's almost as if we become a sacred cow, you know, everything's got to be seen necessarily through the, the eyes of diversity for something to have any true, true worth or meaning. But, you know, without any sort of principle of unity to give any life to diversity, really what you're just cultivating in reality are factions, you know, where you will always be utterly separated from the others that are around you because you have had these clear demarcated lines because of your value of diversity. But yet if we know we are standing on the same ground and we know that because of this this rich place that we stand, which is on the very life stone of the church, which is Jesus Christ. He is the keystone, the cornerstone. Then out of this unity that comes about through the power of Christ, thanks be to God, to the Holy Spirit who has been sent among us as the great unifier, we can truly begin to 
celebrate and rejoice in the diversity that exists within the body of Christ, the church. You know, the hand is not the same as the foot and the heart is not the same as, you know, the, the, the stomach and et cetera, you know. But we realize that we all are playing a precious role in the body of Christ, uh, that is the church. You know, so as I was preparing for this video, thinking about this Saint, Saint Nicholas, an important man within my life who I never met, but yet I can know him via and via the, the very grace of God that has brought us together as family. I think this is an important insight for us too as we journey with important characters through the Advent readings, you know, like John the Baptist, for example. We can begin to realize what sort of impact our Lord may be having on us within our life and what he might be tr trying to bring us to or call us to through the different saints that impact us. And it's always good to spend time cultivating a relationship with the saints that have always meant something to us in our life. So maybe spend some time these next few days thinking about who are, who are the important saints to you? Why are they important? What is it about them that, that just helps to inflame the fire of God's love in your heart? Thank you very much for your time today, my brothers and sisters. Know that I'm with you. Know that I'm praying for you. May God continue to bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much for your time today and watching my video. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube, click that subscribe button and that little bell icon so you don't miss out with anything I'm doing here on this channel. Also, leave a comment down below. Let's continue the conversation, shall we? And if you're interested in what I'm doing over on the old Twitter page, you can go over to at Carmelite Nick and see what my thoughts are over there. Or you can go over to my Facebook page, The Real Frank Fryer. Be up to date with everything I'm doing in the land of Carmel. Thanks again. Know that I'll be praying for you. <laughs>